all the biggest and brightest influencers out there to vibrating your tomato flowers for better yield. But some research is showing that you may be not only harming your yields, but also the flavor of your tomatoes. Hello, plant people. If you guys are new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And today's video, we're doing a very classic gardening in Canada community video where we essentially do a literary review on what's out there to determine if a garden hack is real or not. I just fell down an absolute rabbit hole with this. But what I will first start off with saying is regardless of what you hear me say in this video, what notes you take, because I know many of you take notes, do not get analysis paralysis. Just grow the garden and smash that like button if you want to increase your tomato yields this year. So to be able to even look at this from a perspective of science, we first have to analyze what the theory is that people are going around saying. So theory is you take a vibrator of undisclosed origin and you place it on the flower or the flower stem ultimately to release pollen to help with fertilization now the theory is actually pretty sound tomatoes are considered buzz pollinated crops and this is because not only is it an enclosed flower but more specifically the anthers are considered non dehiscent so fancy terms here is it needs some form of interruption in the plant in order for it to release pollen in high enough volumes to mass pollinate the actual plant itself. Now in the outdoors or in a natural environment, this is done via wind and also bee activity. And in greenhouses, this is done through hormones and actual physical vibrators. I am not joking. So how does this translate into gardeners and the knowledge we know? Well, the reality is that a majority of tomato plants are produced in what we call protective cultivated conditions which is literally a greenhouse <laughs> and in the case of research majority rules so what i found really interesting and i'm actually going to read this directly from one of the studies i was looking at is that china's is the world's largest producer of tomatoes by both hectares and volume in literal tons protected cultivation which can help growers overcome climate limitations and maximize Profitable har harvest has been the most important cultivation system in China and more specifically the Gobi Desert. How cool. But the truth is that a majority of research and knowledge we have is out of greenhouse situations, not the great outdoors, which a majority of us gardeners are actually growing in. The unfortunate part of this lit review is that I'm only going to be able to do a comparison of indoor mechanisms because there's no papers looking at the difference between greenhouse grown and outdoor grown tomatoes. So that's the limitations of this video. In a large production environment where profits are number one, there are three methods that are typically used, specifically bumblebees, PGR, which is basically plant hormones or a spray liquid, and then vibrator. So for those of you out there that are literally just watching this for the answer, number one was bumblebees, number two was vibrators, and the third mechanism that yielded the best was PGR or the actual hormone slash spray. Now the aspects I looked at was the grams, so the size of the fruit, the diameter of the fruit, the number of seeds, and the total percentage pollinated out of all three groups bumblebees won out hands down by a lot and they won out in seed count overall percentage of pollination flavor oddly enough as well by a long shot and also along with the weight of the actual tomato the only thing that everything was a dead straight tie-in was the diameter of the fruit and this is likely due to the variety or the cultivar that they were using so when it came to actually setting fruit the vibrator method showed the lowest setting of fruit the highest was the bumblebees and the one that was in the middle was pgr the total weight of the vibrator tomatoes was 25 
five grams less than that of the bumblebee and total seeds inside the tomato was 40 less than that of the bumblebees so if you're doing seed saving or you're trying to sell your seeds you definitely want to avoid the vibrator option so the question becomes why did bumblebees actually cause a higher rate in pretty much everything across the board and they didn't get into this theory in any of the studies i looked at they were just specifically looking at which of the three options was the best but there are a few theories first off specifically honeybees were not interested in tomatoes and they think this actually has to do with the scent of the actual tomato itself secondly bumblebees are the better bet between honeybees and bumblebees because bumblebees i guess cause a more of a vibration of sorts that actually helps release that anther the non-hissant anther pollen to the rest of the flower so bumblebees are the answer honeybees yielded very very low or no results in this case so because we had the vibration in the actual tomato flower it likely is due to the gentle nature of nature because of wind and bumblebees being able to very gently mobilize the flat plant flowers compared to that of a vibrator which literally shakes the pollen out in some cases you can see where the results can be better the obvious reason for why pgr is lower is because the vibration may be gentle but if any of that liquid actually got in there it would affect the pollen and how it's uptaken by the rest of the flower parts you name it it's a complicated process but that would explain why that one was dead last now the mechanism for the flavor is incredibly interesting and I'm going to have to actually read off of the study here to give you a really good look at how intensely they looked at this because again, they're in it for profits. They wanna sell the tomatoes that everyone wants to eat. So they looked at a total of 21 different compounds which had been reported to positively correlate to consumer liking. And then they looked at 11 compounds that negatively correlated to consumer likely liking and then use them in this study so the main highlights was that the bumblebee pollinated tomatoes contain both more fructose and glucose but less sucrose citric acid and malic acid whereas the vibrator and the pg are expressed higher levels lower levels in fructose glucose higher levels in sucrose citric acid and malic acid so the moral to this entire story is do what makes you happy. If you find it incredibly intimidating to go out and vibrate all these plants, then just don't do it. Conversely, if you do find some value in using a vibrator or maybe spraying them with water, whatever the case is, go wild. You may harm your yield just a little bit, but at the end of the day, not that drastic. What I can tell you though in the conclusions of a vast majority of the studies I looked at, those growing in the confined condition um, that helps reduce climate and blah 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 interference, they are going to be using bumblebees from now on because it uh, increases profits. If you guys enjoyed this video you have to comment down below whether or not you vibrate or just let your tomato flowers do their own thing. Where you first heard of this I'd be interested to know which influencer got you on the train of vibrating or shaking or tickling in some cases your tomatoes and these videos do take a lot of time. I go through a ton of papers to get you guys the best information possible so a thumbs up and a tap on that subscribe button are always enjoyed for free content such as this and i always forget to say this but merch i have an apron t-shirts sweatshirts you name it and a newsletter which is free to sign up for and it does contain things like discount codes to different products and blah 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 and i maybe send out one two ish emails an entire year yes i'm very sparing with that because i know how irritating that can be people on the newsletter can advocate for this just an fyi and i will talk to you guys next time bye